Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett. Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney knows that crime is not always a back alley thing. But even as a district attorney, I was shocked at this case. It started at a church bazaar and social in a large suburban house of worship. Well, well, what's a pretty girl like you doing all by your lonesome? I'll just rest in a minute. We were dancing down in the basement. My husband just went to get me a bottle of soda. Ah, you don't need a rest. The orchestra will be starting up again soon. Come on down with me. No, thank you. I think I'd rather wait for my husband. Ah, oh, come on. You're just going to wait sitting here. Well, please. I said I'd rather not. Ah, stop being coy. Come on. I told you I don't want to go with you. Go with my arm, please. What's going on here? What's the matter, Harriet? Oh, my... I was waiting for you, and... And I saw her sitting here and alone and asked her to come downstairs and dance, that's so. all. And the left finger marks all over her arm. Looks like you asked pretty rough. That's no harm done. You gonna get hot about it? Take the soda bottles, Harriet. Uh, more don't. I said take them. Now, do you want to repeat that question? No. This place is probably full of friends of yours. I don't know anybody around here. Just have to drop in. Then why don't you just drop out? I knew you weren't a member of the church. Go ahead, get out before I call somebody and have you put out. All right. As long as you know you couldn't put me out alone. Anytime you want to try. No, please. Let him go. Come on, Mike. That time's liable to turn up any place, even a church social. Well, forget about him. He's gone now. Drink your soda. Here. Look at you, you're shaking. Well, not from him. A little silly in here now after dancing, that's all. Well, where's that little blero jacket you brought? Oh, I left it out in the car. Well, I'd better go get it for you. It's in the back seat. Okay, I'll find it. Oh, it's you. What were you doing over by those cars there? Neither of me yours. I thought I told you to get out of here. Hey, you better watch your mouth, fellow. This time we're alone. Figured you'd follow me up. I didn't follow you. I came out to get my wife's jacket. Too bad she didn't come out to get her own jacket. She's kind of cute. Look, mister, why don't you take off while you can still do it under your own power? Hey, you know why I asked her to dance? If you was giving me the eye. Why, you... Come on, now. Get up. Get up and get out of here. You think I'd let you get away with that, huh? Think just again, smart guy. Who do you think you're scaring? Put that knife away or I'll take it away from you. Oh, you take it. Like... Like... <laughs> You'll you'll never do that again, mister. All right, all right, clear the way there. Let that car through. 
Hello, Harden. Hello, Chief. That's the body over there? Yep. Heard radio division setting up a roadblock as it drove in. Yeah, I know. I gave him a description of a stranger who crashed this affair tonight. I heard it. I'm not very hopeful about it being picked up, though. He's had a two-hour start. I put the bulletin out as soon as I could. It took almost an hour to get Mrs. Rogers in condition to talk. You see the dead man's wife? Yeah. Did you see this happen? No, she was inside. Came out looking for her husband and found the body. Then why the pickup order for the stranger in particular? Roger had trouble with him? Uh, just words. Nobody saw anything. Uh, the way I get it, he tried to get Mrs. Rogers to dance with him. He didn't want to, but he was insistent. Rogers came along, saw what was going on, and he ordered the fellow to leave. Mm-hmm. All these people been searched? Yep. About 40 couples, a few stags, even the minister. He insisted on it. They made it easier for us. No, I take it you didn't find anything? Nope. There were a couple of the young fellas had ordinary pocket knives on them. Nothing that could have done this, though. The knife could have been ditched someplace. How come you let your man and come outside? See for yourself, Chief. Neighborhood shakes social. Some of them had their kids sleeping in the car. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal stabbing, Chief. Yeah. I don't see how the killer could have managed this without getting some blood on himself and on his clothes. You checked for that during the shakedown? Yeah, just their hands. After all, they chase people. Yeah, I don't like it any better than you do, but it has to be done. Blood not have time to dry by now. Anybody who had it on them might have tried to wash it out. We'll have to check on every suspicious-looking stain. Okay. I got the names and addresses of all of them during the search. Good. You can use that as a checklist. Make sure nobody's disappeared since you got here. You better get them all inside. Right. All right, everybody inside, folks. Everybody inside, please. Uh, what about the people who are kids? Well, uh, if they're sleeping, they'll be all right here. If they're awake, better carry them in. Better ask the minister for any spare clothes around. We find these stains a call for lab analysis. A few of these people mightn't have anything to wear home. Here are the lab reports on that clothing, Mr. Garrett. Well, thanks, Miss Miller. What did they find? Well, there was human blood on one of the shirts, but... Excuse me. This is the attorney's office. Harrington, Miss Miller. Keep there? Yes. He's Harrington for you. Just got a lab report on the clothes, Harrington. There was blood on that white shirt we listed as belonging to Walter Miller. Is he the one that said his little boy had a nosebleed while they were driving to church? Yeah. We should be able to check it out right now, though. What was the blood type? What blood type on that, Miss Miller? Type O. Type O, Harrington. Well, the story looks great, then. Medical examiner just finished with Roger's body. His was A.B. Everything keeps pointing to that stranger. You think Mrs. Rogers gave a good description? Yeah, I think so. He swear she'd know him if she saw him again. Good. I'm going to have some photos pulled for her to look at. Now, that'll take a couple of hours. You want me to come in? No, you stay out there. I'll come out and meet you. You keep a list of the people at the church? Right in my pocket. We let some of them go too soon because of their children. I want to question the ones who live closest to the church. Make sure they've never seen the man we're looking for before last night. Well, he might have come from the immediate neighborhood, all right. Some people left on foot when we released them. Well, we'll check it. Wait for me at the intersection of Ridge Drive and Crescent Avenue. I'll be there in a half hour. Do you have a copy of the suspect's description, Miss Miller? Yes, sir. Put down to the photo gallery. I want copies of mug shots of all known criminals who fit that description. Especially the ones who are too free with a knife. What shall I do when I get to the center? Have a squad car. Bring them out to me. I'll keep you posted on my location through radio division. What's that house number again, Chief? Brubaker? Now, let me find it. Yeah. Herbert Brubaker. 447 Elm. 447. You see the corner house up there where the man is mowing the lawn. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. I remember him from last night. I hope he's more help than the last five or six of them. Mr. Brubaker. Oh, uh, hello. 
Would you mind turning that off for a minute? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I'm glad to see you, fellas. As a matter of fact, I uh, I was just thinking of phoning the police station. What about? You got some information on the Rogers case? Well, no. I... Well, it's something I guess I shouldn't even be bothering you with right now while you're concerned with a killing. But... Well, a couple of things were stolen out of my car while we were at the church. What things, Mr. Brubaker? A knife? No, 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 nothing like that. Uh, an electric hedge clipper and a pair of pruning shears. You sure those things were taken while you were at church? No place else they could have been taken. Hardware store was the last stop we made before we went to the church. I put them on the back seat. This morning, they weren't there. The guy we're looking for left the place just before Rogers went outside. Rogers might have surprised him going through Brubaker's car. That's possible, Mr. Garrett. Mort Rogers' car wasn't parked more than 20 feet from mine last night. Yeah, let the head clippers and pruning shears won't be easy to trace. Well, yeah, maybe we'll get some other complaints. The trouble is, people don't always complain. Come on, Hargan. Goodbye, Brubaker. Uh, so long. Goodbye, goodbye, Jenny. Well, what are you going to... Hey... One of our squad cars cruising down the street on the other side. He wants us. I'll be the photos I want Mrs. Rogers to look at. Get them and then give him the list of names you've got and tell him to rush them back to Miss Miller as fast as you can. I'll get her on radio phone and give her instructions. Right. Unit one to Central. Central to Unit One. Go ahead, one. Now, this is Mr. Garrett, Sergeant. I want to be connected to my office. Stand by. District Attorney's office. Me, Miss Miller. The squad car is bringing you a list of names. I want your entire switchboard on this. Call everybody on the list. Ask them if they had anything stolen from their cars last night. Make them check and call back. I want to complete report. Yes, sir. I'll expect an answer while I'm seeing Mrs. Rogers. You can reach me at the county morgue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here you are, Chief. Here's the mugshot. But if the killer isn't in this batch, I'm afraid he's going to be hard to find. Well, we may catch him in the way he least expects. No? How's that? By catching a thief first. A man had been brutally murdered in the church parking lot. All available evidence pointed to a stranger none of the congregation had ever seen before. I ordered crime gallery shots of all possible suspects, and Harrington and I took them to the county morgue for possible identification by the victim's wife. How about this one, Mrs. Rogers? No. This? No. Well, this is the last one. That's not him either. Well, I guess that does it, Hines. The man we're after isn't a known criminal. Not in this state, anyhow. Could I... Could I go back to my husband, Mom? I, I want to be near him until they have to... We weren't even married a year yet. Next month would have been our first anniversary. Well, yeah, nothing we can do for it, Chief. No. Let's get back to the office. Young bride like that. Nice future the killer left her. There's only one thing we can do about it. What? Make sure his future isn't any better. Garrett, I tried to reach you at the morgue. They said you were on your way back. Well, did you complete that phone check? Well, all but two people who must be out for the day. Looks like we got something, though. A call came through about five minutes ago from a man named Arthur Pruney Jr. He was at the church last night. Something missing from his car? Yes, a lady's wristwatch. It was brand new. He bought it yesterday for his girl's birthday. Left it in the glove compartment of his car, intending to surprise her with it on the way home. Well, that's going to help, Chief. Plenty. Especially if the killer tries to sell it or pawn it someplace. He might just give it to some girl. I don't think so. 
The man we're after doesn't sound like he'd have a girl of his own. Did you ask Mr. Perney if the serial number of the watch was on his sale set? Yes, sir. Here it is. Uh, serial 774-3. Seven, seven, four, Seven two L. Good, it's Sunday. He took the watch last night, so there isn't much of a chance that he could have unloaded it yet. By opening time tomorrow morning, I want every pawnbroker and jeweler within a hundred miles of here on the lookout for anybody trying to sell a pawn or watch with that serial number. I'll take it down to the teletype room right now. Well, when you're finished, meet me in the record room. But the guy we're after hasn't got a record. Well, not that we know about. I'm looking for something else. All right, Charlie. Put that batch of cards through again with the new selector code. Oh, that's Keith. Bulletin's on the wires. What are those you're running? Open files. Unsolved cases of petty theft. Especially things taken from cars and parking lots where there's no attendant on duty. <laughs> Must be plenty of cases like that. The same man wouldn't be responsible for all of them. No, but I'm beginning to get a definite pattern on some of them. Look at these notes. Portable radio stolen from a car a week before last. A YWCA dance at Elephant, Mission Free. Same night, same place. A man answering the description of our stranger got in an argument with a coffee shop counter man. Pulled a knife on him. Didn't use it, though, because a prowl car came by and he ran. Hey, that's good. Oh, here's another one. Church, social, and dance held a month ago at Walton Beach. Mission three. Dance committee ordered man to leave because he had been bothering women. Again, the same description. Cars in the parking lot had been looted. That sounds like our boy, all right. But we still don't know who he is. There's something we do know, though. Come here. Look at this county map. Now, last night he was here in West Haven. Week before last, here in Elderton. A month ago, here at Walton Beach. All suburban areas in the northwest section of the county. Yeah. Means he must be living or working in that area someplace. Well, that's the area I went combed. Uh, those are small communities, though, Chief, and he was a stranger in all three places. Unless, of course. Yes? Well, this section here, right in the middle of the circle. Paradise Hills? Yeah. Amusement park and summer camps in there. Well, they're closed for the season. No, not entirely. Skeleton maintenance crew, watchman, tramp looking for a place to hold up. You sure about that? Yeah. I worked up there one year when I was a kid. Old couple run a general store there all year round. Reb and Jenny Watson. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's put squads out in the three places I've designated. What about Paradise Hills? We'll take that ourselves. The amusement park and camp area is just up ahead, Chief. We can leave the cart watching the store. Walk around. It doesn't look like a store would do much business up here this time of year. Well, I guess the year-round people must give Watkins enough trade to keep going. Just him and the old lady. They don't need much to get by. Oh, there. There's the place now. A few cars parked in the shed behind it. Yeah. Camp maintenance crews, I guess. Hey, chilly. Mm. It'll feel good to get inside. Hello? Hello, anybody here? Oh, what can I do for you? Glenn, Glenn Harrington, is it? Well, hello, Mrs. Watkins. I didn't know if you remember me. Of course, I remember you. Yet he says he's the best help we ever had. <laughs> he hasn't changed. He's the best I've ever had, too. Oh, uh, Mrs. Watkins, uh, this is my chief, Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. I'm glad to know you. My pleasure, Mrs. Watkins. Is Reb around, Mrs. Watkins? Oh, he's just playing on his diet, he misses you. But he drove over to Elder not ten minutes ago to go to the doctor. To try out a care again. Oh, that's too bad. He'll be back for supper if he can stay. You're both very welcome. <laughs> we might have to. Depends on whether or not you can help us. Somebody here can help us, all right. What is it, Chief? Come over here and take a look at this souvenir showcase. Yeah, brand new wristwatch. Doesn't seem to be in keeping with the rest of the merchandise you stock, Mrs. Watson. Well, it ain't regular stock. 
rubbed it up to get it. I'd keep it if you want it. What we want to know is where your husband got it. Where did it come from, Mrs. Watson? Oh, I read book it in trade. Some other fellow who run a bill here. Oh, what's his name? Well, Cox is his last name. I don't know his first one. No, it ain't stolen, is it? Oh, we can tell you that in a minute. Get it out of the showcase, I can. Mm. You got a record of the serial number? Yes. 774-372L. Try the back of the case off. Yeah. Serial number's check. This is a watch Perny bought for his girl. Cops are a boy, all right. They're getting trouble about this. You have no way of knowing. Cops could have robbed us, too. Where can we find cops? Does he work in here someplace? No, no, he don't. He just stays in one of the cabins up by the boys' camp near the ridge. Watchman's going to throw him out. The cop gives him a portable radio. Yeah, I wonder how he got that. Same way he got everything else. It's getting dark, Ivan. We better get up there. Yeah. Oh, uh, say hello to this for me, Mrs. Watson. Now, don't you want to know what cop looks like? Thanks, but that's something we already know. We'll need a statement from you later. Suppose he could have made a run for it? Unless he'd find a better hideout than this. Look. Hmm? Where? Over there, that cluster of rocks. Just a flicker of light. Come on. I see him. Mm-hmm. What's he doing? Working on something? Stand still a minute. What does that sound like? Shot me a knife against a rock. Gentle from now on. I've got him covered. Who's that? Who's out there? Who are you in your foot after me? He's wise, Chief. Can't be helped now. We want to talk to you. About what? About a church social you crashed last night, Mr. Cobb. <laughs> He's stuck behind the rock, Chief. Quick. Chief, that's a rifle he's got in there. I know it. Listen, cop, the only way you can get out of there is to come right toward it. If you try to climb over the rock, that fire will light you up like a duck in a shooting gallery. We can't move either, Chief. He can wait for the fire to go out. If we let him wait. Got a little trick we'd like to show you, cop. All right, Hanson. Fire a shot right into the opening between the rocks. I can't see anything Just to fire, fire it. You hear that, ricochet cop? What about it? If we keep bouncing shots off those rocks, one of those ricochets might find you, mister. Give him another one. You dirty Never man. mind the compliment. Throw that rifle out and follow it with your hands up. Or I'll have a Tommy gun playing billiards off that rock within 15 minutes. All right, all right, all right, all right. The rifle first. Heave it. I wonder where we got that rifle. Oh, that's easy. Some hunter's car, someplace. I don't know what you guys want with me. I haven't done anything. Well, good. You got a whole jail full of innocent people. You'll love me. Now drop your hands and I'll put these on. Hang him. Hang him. Oh, 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 you... Drop that knife. Come on. Come on. Let it go. Yeah. Good thing you grabbed him, Steve. I didn't even see that thing. The way he had it armed. <laughs> Took two of you. For another second, I'd have had it between your ribs. A second can make a big difference, Cop. You'll find that out the day the state stops you in the chair. Shove off, mister. You've got a long trip ahead. <laughs> Listening to Mr. Dick 
District Attorney, which has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.